While the legendary Marilyn Monroe wasn't with us for nearly as long as she should have been, she lived most of her life in the limelight. Not to mention, during her Hollywood career, she lived in some stunning homes, including the only home she ever actually purchased in Brentwood, Los Angeles. So let's take a look. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. In her tragically short life, the icon Marilyn Monroe was able to accomplish a whole lot on the silver screen. The very first blonde bombshell, Marilyn was the largest sex symbol of the 1950s. Not to mention, she overcame a difficult upbringing and an endless series of hurdles along the way towards earning herself a life in the lap of luxury. And while diamonds may be most girls' best friend, in Marilyn's case, she was always keeping her eyes open for the next breathtaking home. In fact, Marilyn would live in a series of houses throughout her life, almost a whopping 40 of them over the span of her relatively short career. Ranging from mansions to hotel suites, the actress tended to prefer short-term rentals rather than to commit to owning a permanent house. That being said, there are a couple of homes in particular that are worth a little more in-depth of an investigation, including a stunning $2.5 million condo in West Hollywood that she once lived in. And her final property, the only residence she actually ever bought. A dream home that would turn into a nightmare by becoming the very place of her mysterious death. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, and today we're looking at the one-time homes of the legendary Marilyn Monroe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. At the very young age of just 16 years old, Marilyn Monroe married her first husband, Jim Doherty. Shortly after getting hitched, Marilyn would begin what would become one of the biggest games of musical houses in the history of mankind. Over the next 20 years, she would move in and out of over 42 different homes. Okay, so I guess the number was over 40, not under. Anyways, her first home was a 600 square foot one bedroom and one bathroom studio bungalow that she shared with Jim in Santa Barbara, California. The couple would only live here for a few short months before moving into a three bedroom home elsewhere in California owned by Jim's parents. Once more, their stay would prove to be short lived. After abandoning their three bedroom home, Marilyn and Jim would spend about a year and a half shuffling around in Southern California before ultimately running out of cash and being forced to move into Jim's parents' house. As you might imagine, Marilyn wasn't exactly ecstatic about living under the same roof as her in-laws, as she and Jim's mother did not get along. After roughing it out for a year under his mom's roof, Marilyn's relationship with Jim would come to an end, and they divorced in 1946 after four years of marriage. Now at the age of 20 years old, Marilyn was ready to undertake a career in modeling, and to support herself, she rented a place at an apartment hotel for women called Hollywood Studio Club. Marilyn would stay at this spot during the earliest stages of her career, but shortly thereafter, it was time for her to take over the movie industry. To help facilitate any role she might land, Marilyn found herself an apartment in Burbank to house sit while the actual owners were away touring the globe. From this place, she would jumpstart her film career with bit parts in films like Dangerous Years and something called Skudahoo Skudahe. After her film career was in full motion, Marilyn moved in with a couple of her friends and shared an apartment with them in El Palacio Apartments for about five months. Soon after, Marilyn would turn into one of the biggest movie stars in the world. From that point forward, she jumped from one hotel room to another, staying at ritzy places like the Beverly Carlton Hotel, before briefly moving in with her agent, Johnny Hyde. By 1952, Marilyn was dating baseball superstar Joe DiMaggio. Once they got married, the two lived in a place located in Doheny Apartments before moving out and renting a home in the glamorous Hollywood Hills. Unfortunately, this marriage wouldn't last either. After it was over, Marilyn would discover a condo in West Hollywood and move once more. Now in a nice turn of events, that exact condo has recently been placed back on the market by its current owner. So why don't we check this place out in more detail? Located on the top floor of a building built in the 1930s known as Granville Tower, Marilyn's new home featured more than 2,000 square feet of space 
with two bedrooms and two bathrooms featured across two levels. Boasting vaulted ceilings, gigantic windows with spectacular views of the surrounding city and mountains, not to mention incredible finishing touches like a circular staircase that connects the two floors, a formal dining room, and a kitchen with Venetian plaster, as well as steel cabinets, Marilyn had never lived in more spectacular style to this point in her short life. After all, her master suite not only took up the bulk of the entire second floor, but it also featured more than 10 windows to flood the space with calming California sunlight. And then there's that ensuite bathroom with large standing shower, deep soaking tub, and even more of those massive windows. Marilyn would live here on her own for about a year, and it would be the last apartment that she ever lived in. In the future, this apartment would wind up in the hands of none None other than Portia de Rossi, who owned the place for a number of years before selling it in 2003 for around $1 million. The current owner would then list the apartment in 2018 for $2.49 million, but no buyer was found. Since then, the unit has appeared and disappeared from the listings constantly. Upon leaving West Hollywood, Marilyn would meet playwright Arthur Miller. The two were soon married and moved into a home in New York City on East 57th Street. They also rented a breathtaking vacation home in the Hamptons. However, in the early 60s, these two would split as well. That's when Marilyn would purchase her first and only house. Hidden in a cul-de-sac in the exclusive neighborhood of Brentwood in Los Angeles, Marilyn purchased this home at the urging of her psychiatrist, who told her that she should begin putting down some roots. It wound up being the right suggestion, and Marilyn fell in love with this place, ultimately believing that it had become an extension of herself. After all, she told Life Magazine in her final interview, Anybody who likes my house, I am sure I will get along with. Marilyn bought the home in February of 1962 for only $77,500. She reportedly paid for half of the home in cash and took out a mortgage for the other half. Located on Helena Drive, this Hacienda style abode was built in 1929 and boasted four bedrooms and three baths, featuring a red tile roof and adobe walls alongside thick gates that block the house off from the street and a curved driveway that leads right up to the front door. This home offered all all the necessary privacy that a superstar like Marilyn would need. Meanwhile, inside, an extra-wide living room featured terracotta floors alongside beams of wood that lined the ceiling above and a blue-tiled fireplace. A short walk from the living room led to a sunroom with tranquil views of the backyard. And Marilyn's master bedroom featured its own fireplace, a personal dressing room, not to mention plus-sized windows for looking out of and into the tree-filled backyard. Also located outside was a sparkling kidney-shaped swimming pool, a grove of citrus trees, and a modest guest house located between the main residence and the garage. Most interesting detail of all, however, near the front door of Marilyn's place was a tile that read in Latin, Cursum Proficio. Roughly translated, that means, here ends my journey. While in a tragic twist of fate, those words would come true when in August of 1962, only six months after purchasing the home, Marilyn was found dead in her bedroom. She had spent her final months visiting Mexico City and Tijuana to handpick decor items for her home. On this trip, she'd purchase mirrors, textiles, and towels for her new place, but she would never get the chance to install them. Records suggest that Marilyn had spent the afternoon before her death speaking to her psychiatrist on the phone. They talked for about an hour because Marilyn was complaining about her inability to sleep. A few hours after the call, Marilyn's housekeeper watched her walk into her bedroom. It was the last time anyone would ever see her alive. At 3 a.m. the next morning, her housekeeper noticed that a light was still on in Marilyn's room. When she couldn't get into the room because the door was locked, she called Marilyn's psychiatrist who drove over and broke into the room through the bedroom window. That's when he discovered Marilyn's body on her bed, her hand gripping the telephone on her nightstand, and an empty bottle of pills beside her. When the police finally arrived on the scene, they discovered that Marilyn's house was only partly furnished. She never actually had the time to complete the vision of what was supposed to become her safe haven, but somehow she wound up turning it into her final resting place. Right after her death, more than six competing offers were made on Marilyn's house. The eventual owners became the Nunes family, who then listed the home much later on in 2017 for $6.9 million. It would end up selling for $7.25 million. So there you have it, the tragic story of Marilyn Monroe as told through her incredible real estate journey. Marilyn may not have ever found a place that was truly hers until the end, 
but as someone who has just recently become a homeowner myself, I'm glad Marilyn was able to have that experience, even if it was short-lived. Be sure to let me know your thoughts about Marilyn's homes down in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching. Follow me on Instagram to chat and see you all in the next video. Bye!